in today's time when uh, python is everywhere it has taken as a center stage and uh, um, literally you don't have to do anything just if you know a few basic things then you can go ahead with the python that is how the language world has evolved but then go to the practical world go to the practical world you still need require c++ c and c++ there you would be utilizing python for some interface point of view but then when it comes to the actual development of some product there i don't think you would be so much of uh, dependent on python but then let us not debate this is not the class about debating on these two things but the point of telling about this python is that would help you in uh, swimming the stream but then from the understanding point of view uh, that would be difficult so here is a subject linear algebra that will be very much helpful in understanding whatever subsequent things that you will be studying maybe ai ml whatever you have studied also that you will rethink my job here is not to teach you linear algebra that you have studied earlier that is not the part of my teaching process i mean part of this uh, subject scope of this subject that is beyond that what i will be teaching here is to change the way you have been thinking about linear algebra the way you have been thinking about random processes i would try to give a new dimension to the entire process of linear algebra we'll start with matrix multiplication many of the examples that i will be giving many of you would be knowing but then for some of you it may be something new and uh, regarding books these two are very matured subjects there are tremendous number of books are there tremendous number of materials are there you would you can go through any of the books you like i have uh, written so many authors name you can go through any of the books doesn't matter okay by the way which are the books that you have studied for linear algebra maybe in your btech you forgot no idea sir book one of book by lalji prasad Can you be clearer, please? I couldn't hear that. Uh, linear algebra by Lalji Prasad. Okay. Any other book? Tashpal. इंजीनियरिंग मैथ्स बाई दासन पाल दास एंड पाल इंजीनियरिंग मैथमेटिक्स ओके
Okay. Any other? Sir, P. S. Greywall. Greywall. Okay, that's a quite famous book. Good. Higher Engineering Mathematics, yes, Greywell. So, many of you um, must be familiar with the very uh, common equation AX equal to B. That's right. AX equal to B. What is A, what is X, what is B? Sir, A and B are coefficient, X is variable. Mm -hmm. For what? For the line, straight line. Okay. So AX equal to B. First you tell me uh, first you tell me which one is a vector, which one is a uh, Matrix. You must have heard about these terms, right? Vector, matrix, scalar, isn't it? Yes. So what do they, what is the meaning of them? Sir, so vector is a point in the space. A matrix is a uh, tabular form of some data and scalar mm -hmm. is some value. Okay. Any other? Mm -hmm. How do you define a vector? How do you define a vector? Student direction. Excuse me. Vector is a representation of both magnitude and direction. Yeah, magnitude and direction, that's right. So, and what about scalar? Only magnitude. It has only magnitude. Well, yes. Can you give me some example of a scalar quantity? The scalar quantity is like length of uh, uh, length, height, etc., uh, weight, and the vector quantity is like uh, direction, uh, distance, mm -hmm. velocity, velocity, velocity. That's right. Displacement. 
Displacement is a vector. scalar or it's a scalar quantity or vector quantity? Vectors. Vector. Vector quantity. Okay. And what about a matrix? Some matrix is tabular form of some data. Tabular form of data, okay. Two day array. Form of data. 2D array. Anything else? Basically, it has got 1D array also. Matrix can be 1D array also, right? 1D and 2D array could be 3D array also. So let me write and dimensional array. Isn't it? Now, just try to relate it with AX equal to B. Which one is a matrix? So capital A. So A is the matrix. A is the matrix. What about X and B? Scalar. X, X, is, scalar X, X is a vector, B, in, B is a scalar, right? B is a scalar, X is a vector, A is a matrix. Okay, there are so many confusion. Scalars. Sir, all three are matrices. Uh, sir, hello. Uh, one sir, at sir, a time, one at a time. Sir, we can represent all of them in matrix form. Sir, A can be a, any matrix and X can be a column matrix and same as B, B can be a column matrix. It's a way of representation of data. It's a way of representation of data. So just in place instead of saying the data why don't you say it's a way of representing a vector yes sir, yes, sir. Hmm? isn't yes, it sir. it can yes, be said as it's a way of representing a vector or yes, so to say it's a way of representing a scalar also if it is a one cross one matrix yes sir that's right now instead of having so much of confusion what let us understand what exactly this uh, vector, scalar, matrix. Uh, don't be, don't be shy. Uh, I am also not shy in this regard in accepting the fact that I was a lot confused. The first time when I came to know about vector and scalar is when I was studying my twelfth, eleventh, in fact. After tenth, I started. Maybe some of you might have known much before that. Um, but I came to know about scalar and vector in 12th. I also came to know about matrix in 12th. Then subsequently, during the engineering time, the teacher used to very conveniently, I mean, synonymically, they used to say matrix, vector, both are synonym. In a synonymical way, they, way they used to say. So I got really confused. What exactly this vector, matrix, how can they be synonym? Then started exploring. What is exactly a vector is? Well, it's a magnitude and direction. That is true. But then, how do I denote that magnitude? How do I represent that magnitude? While working on a computer, how do I represent that magnitude? Then came to know about this uh, matrix. Then started relating each one of them. Say for example, um, magnitude and uh, direction, the vector quantity. Now, if I say magnitude and vector, I have a, what is the magnitude then again? What is the magnitude? 
I say this one, it's a vector. Now, which one is magnitude? And which one is direction? Do I have anything? I can have a coordinate plane. Have a coordinate plane. Something like this. I can have a coordinate plane. But then the vector may start from here may start from here also from the origin also but let me say it starts from here now tell me what is a vector it's a magnitude and direction now tell me what is the magnitude is it the length of the vector this length and what is the direction is it the angle it subtends Angle it subtends with whom? That is what the question is. But then, if I if let us simplify this and try to understand that we have a coordinate plane x and y, let me represent it with two vectors. Let me represent it with two vectors. One is uh, this. This is one vector. Let me give a different color to this. And let me have another vector. Let me have another vector. So both of them are of unit size both of them are of unit size so let me say it is three or if i say one this will be one unit so and remember it's not centimeter actually just i'm writing it here Okay, so I have two vectors. One I denote it as I, the other I denote it as J. One I denote it as I, this particular x-axis one I denote it as I, the y-axis, uh, the vertical axis uh, I denote it as J. So these two vectors are of unit, unit vector. Can I represent this vector in terms of these two unit vector that is what the question is can i represent this blue vector in terms of these two orange vectors it is possible how how it is possible Sir, by taking its projection on both the axes? Yeah. So let us first sometime assume that this vector starts from here for the sake of simplification. Okay. For the sake of simplification, let us take this blue vector starts from origin. So how do I represent this particular vector, this blue vector? This blue vector would be a combination of this vector let me color it with uh, let us say green and uh, there will be another vector of this so it's something like i traverse 
where I travel along X direction certain distance, then along Y direction certain distance. So I can bring it here. I can bring it here. So I can travel in X direction certain amount of distance, in Y direction certain amount of distance. So the net distance that you covered and the net direction, the ultimate directions that you are with respect to your starting point, that is what your direction is. You traveled along X axis, you travel along Y axis. What is the distance you have covered starting from origin to this point? Not the distance you have traveled at which location you are with respect to the starting point and with respect to the starting point, what angle you are, that is what the magnitude and direction it gives. Then how do we represent this? What is the relationship between the matrix? This is what the vector is, right? Then what is matrix? Matrix is representing this particular value where exactly this so with respect to this uh, starting point if this value is let us say 0 comma 0 this value is let us say 5 comma 5 so how do i represent this 5 comma 5 Matrix is one of the convenient way of representing this 5 comma 5. Then I was talking about this orange color vectors. Essentially speaking, each vector, this green vector, this green vector is some multiplicating fact, uh, multiplication of this orange vector, isn't it? This green vector is some x times this orange vector. Similarly, this, this green vector is some orange time, uh, some x or y times this orange vectors. So what we are writing, we're writing uh, we're writing that um, Uh, what you say that um, vector quantity, scalar quantity. So this particular vector, if I say, yeah, I and uh, J, I and J. So this green vector is some x times i and uh, uh, the other green vertical one is some y times j. This is how I can represent it. Now here x and y are some scalar quantities. x and y are scalar quantities. i and j are the vector quantities of unit magnitude i is along the x direction y is al uh, j is along the y direction so now this is how the matrix vector confusion everything would be completely evaporated matrix is a way of representing your vector values matrix is representation So if I write, if I write this blue matrix, blue vector, I would be writing something like, let us say 5 comma 4. Let us say this coordinate value is 5 comma 4. That means I am traversing 5 unit of distance along x axis, 4 unit of distance along y axis and I am reaching 
here this particular point and this is what the new vector quantity that is 5 4 with this the angle is also defined or in other words I am traversing along x axis five times of unit vector i and along y axis four times of unit vector j so the entire area of two dimensional plane can be covered using these two unit vectors i and j right these two unit vectors and their combination but the combination is actually linear combination so these two unit vectors i and j and their linear combination can be utilized to cover this entire plane what way a or x let me write as i have written earlier or simply write a also a times i plus b times j whatever value this would give whatever value this would give that is sufficient enough to travel the entire two dimensional plane a is a scalar quantity i is the unit vector along x direction b is another scalar quantity j is the unit vector along y direction is this right is this understood now the question is this understanding of this actually gives rise to so many things so many things are there one of the question that i ask usually is uh, let us let us relate this one to the real world problems that is what the topic i will be actually this subject is actually i'm not going to teach how you are uh, uh, deriving x, uh, you are solving for x uh, what is that uh, lu minimization lu lu minimizations and uh, there are so many things are there just um, going out of track actually a little bit then uh, lu factorization uh, sorry minimization i was telling lu factorization uh, we are not going to learn all those things here we're not going to learn uh, how do you how to calculate determinants what is the kramer's rule how do you inverse eigen value eigen vectors we are not going to do that all those things we'll be doing we'll be doing but then not the way you have been doing in your earlier btec level here we need to understand the entire concept once again from a different perspective so this i j this this little concept very 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 small one very um, ignorable thing but let us understand how big this is well uh, all of you know about this uh, there is something called rgb in uh, images or photographs You know about this, right? What does this R stands for? G stands for? B stands for? Sir, red, green, blue. Red, green, blue. Now, how this is related to the visible spectrum, electromagnetic spectrum? How this is related? Sir, every visible uh, every visible light that uh, that our eye can uh, recognize can be uh, derived from these three. Okay, that's true. But partly, you know about visible spectrum, right? 
I know about visible spectrum. I just uh, copy an image yes. from Wikipedia and just show you. Hmm. So, what is that visible spectrum? Sir, three times zero zero nano to four seven eight zero zero nanometer. Uh, sorry, yeah. That is the wavelength, right? There is the electromagnetic spectrum, right? Yes, sir. Hmm. I just got one image from the net. Yeah. I hope it is visible, right? So that's what the electromagnetic spectrum from long waves to gamma rays. In this, there is one small segment called visible spectrum that starts from roughly around 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer. Whatever you say, that is a very precise value. So roughly it starts from uh, blue to green, uh, blue to red, sorry, blue to red. Now the question is, uh, So visible electromagnetic spectrum, the band is something 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer. That's right. So the entire electromagnetic, I mean, and the entire elect, visible electromagnetic spectrum, that is 400 to 700 nanometer, is represented with certain conditions. There are certain conditions, put an asterisk marks. So the entire visible electromagnetic spectrum, 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer, is visible using your, uh, through your display devices, using these three red, green, blue colors. That is what the whole concept is, right? That is what the entire thing, right? In one sentence, if I say 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer of space is visible using three colors, red, green, blue. Let us denote these three colors as three vectors, red vector, green vector, blue vector. The linear combination of red, green, blue is adequate enough to display the visible spectrum of 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer. What you do in a paint, you vary the values of red, green and blue. Isn't it? Depending on the uh, number of bits that are there in the red channel, in the green channel, in the blue channel, assuming that the red channel has got 8 bit green, blue, each of them is 8 bit. So minimum value is 0, maximum value is 255. So 0 to 255, you very red, you very green, you very blue. So there are so much of huge combinations, 256 into 256 into 256. Number of combinations are there. So it is nothing but red axis, red has got one unit vector green has got one unit vector blue is one unit vector and you multiply a certain scalar quantity with this red unit vector green unit vector and blue unit vector three different scalar quantities and take a linear combination of that that is what you do now the question is why at all red and green and blue Can't I have my own set of colors? And the question is, why three? Why not two? Why not 
one or why not four? Why three? These are certain questions that you need to ask and how it is related to vector, how it is related to really and algebra. These colors starting from blue to red. First of all, these three values are adequate enough to represent the color. That is for sure. Now, that's why they have given. Is it like that? Now, there is, I, I told while telling about this, I told that uh, there is a star here, like uh, conditions apply. What is that condition? The condition says, though you are combining red, green and blue to get the entire visible electromagnetic spectrum, there is one portion that cannot be, that cannot be reproduced. There is a small portion. So not the entire one, that is what the condition apply. But then we can ignore that. For the sake of understanding the concept, we can ignore that. Now the question is here, why red, green, blue? Why not something else? Now, um, in place of this uh, two vectors, in place of these two vectors, can I have another set of vectors? Can I have another set of vectors that, uh, uh, let us say, I have rotated it. Let me put this one as a black. OK. Now, can I have a linear combination of these two, black, and cover the entire area of this two-dimensional space? Yes, sir. If it is so, if it is yes, then in place of red, green, blue, I can have other three colors also, three different colors also that can cover the entire visible spectrum. Yes, it is possible. But as I told you, this linear area of this uh, two dimensional plane and this electromagnetic spectrum, they cannot be compared. They cannot be compared in the sense that the linear combination of RGB cannot produce the entire visible spectrum. There is a small portions that will be left. Well, RGB have been taken optimally that covers the entire maximum portions of the visible spectrum. I can have three other different colors that is also capable of reproducing as max number of colors as possible. If that is adequate for me, I would definitely go for that. And moreover, it's a linear combination. It's just a plus scalar quantity multiplied by the vector. Multiplication and addition. It's a linear combination. That is what the speciality of this red, green, blue. But as you have understood, with orange, I can cover the entire one. With black, also I can cover the entire one, entire two-dimensional plane. But then, is it true every time? Is it true every time? So there are so many such kind of questions are there. We'll be talking about this 
in subsequent classes. So, uh, yeah, it's time, time up. So we'll stop here. Tomorrow again we will resume from here and try to understand uh, this vector concept little more. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.